Next plane then. <laughs> I'm so used to saying it. Microsoft Flight Simulator. 2020? Is that what it's called? I've no idea. But anyway, this is the new sim. Oh my goodness me. Now usually I need a very strong coffee in the morning to wake me up, but when I woke up this morning and downloaded this, in fact actually I was downloading it through the night, stayed up until 12 o'clock just to make sure it was ready. And uh, yeah, I don't need a coffee. All I need is this sim because it absolutely has blown me away. I'm not going to mess around guys, seriously. Now if this video is not a tutorial for the new Microsoft Flight Sim. If you're watching this like either now or later on, it's not a how to do something video. It's not even a review. Literally, this is my very first flight. So I've no idea what I'm doing, but I thought I'd just live stream anyway because it's such a very special occasion. This is, you know, a golden age in Flight Sim history, really. And we are sat on the ground at Heathrow at the moment. And hopefully, the plan is, is to head to East Midlands, my very first flight in this sim. So let me just check the chat if there is anyone there. No, not yet. That's fine. <laughs> to be honest, I'm not expecting anyone to be here, to be honest, because I, I would imagine you all are flying yourselves in the new sim. Because I know that's what I plan to do all day today. But anyway, hopefully you can hear me okay. And I'm just going to crack on and uh, just have a look around. This is Heathrow Airport. This is, the, by the way, the deluxe premium version of the sim. So this is actually a uh, a uh, handcrafted airport. And quite honestly, guys, I'm really shocked by a couple of things. For my very because I did do a quick flight around Renton just to sort of mess around with settings and things like that uh, get a few of my controls all sorted and the first thing that struck me actually is something that surprised me it's the flight model I've only flown the 172 so far um, a very quick couple of circuits around Renton my phone's going mental for some reason I'm sorry about that hang on let me just mute that <laughs> um, and just the feeling of flight is just absolutely it's staggering. It feels just because I've flown in a couple of 172s. Um, one, was, one was a G1000 variant, actually, which is not this one today. We're just going to uh, fly the box standard version. And the way it bumps around in the air and the way it flies. I haven't messed around with anything, guys. I haven't messed around with my axis uh, sensitivities or anything. Um, it feels absolutely spot on already I'm very 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 surprised I just had a feeling it might you know I just had a, a worry even that it might be a little bit arcadey in the way it feels but no absolutely no no way at all it's very very realistic and then of course the second thing that struck me was the performance of this thing I mean my computer's you know it's kind of getting long in the tooth now really and I'm only only using 16 gigs of RAM by the way guys I didn't get chance to uh, upgrade my RAM just by laziness really more than anything else and just just haven't had chance to but I thought you know what I'm actually going to see what this sim how it runs with uh, 16 gigs of RAM and I mean it's early days guys I'm sat at Heathrow Airport one of the most busiest and frame rate intensive places you can do this so far so good absolutely incredible stuff Hello Monty, have you checked out Biggin Hill yet? Actually, no, I haven't checked out anything apart from I did a quick circuit around Renton and that's all I've done today. So this is really a raw first impression. This is as raw as it gets. Um, I don't know nothing about this sim in terms of how to do the view system or anything. I've messed around with the, the graphic settings. I'll, have a look, I'll show you that in a bit. Um, but I've, I've got my graphic settings at the moment. I'm going to be tweaking this for weeks probably to get the right you know sweet spot but I'm running at about high at the moment not ultra I'm not even going to dare do that just yet but I've got to say performance so far is very encouraging as my dog is in the way <laughs> careful there we go 
Right, anyway, so I think we should start this up. I'm not going to mess around with ATC or anything like that. So I know you guys have probably seen loads of amazing videos of uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator. Um, this is nothing like that. This is just my raw first impressions of the sim. So, uh, you know, you'll have to bear with me, really. I'm probably not going to do things right, but I just want to check it out, guys. Very exciting times. So battery coming on. That's loud. Uh, we could put our beacon on. I just, I think, the, I think the third thing that struck me about this sim is the sounds. You know, I've seen all the Discovery series sort of episodes and what they've done with the incredible soundscape, but it's not until you flick the switches and turn all the buttons and move around and hear the engine and the creaks and rattles that you think, hang on, this, it, this does not feel like a default aircraft. It feels like a fully fledged sort of, uh, not quite study level, if I you know we hate that term these days, but it's not quite at that standard. But it feels a really polished, high quality sort of um, all the aircraft feel at very, very high quality indeed. Right, so anyway, let's uh, mixture is on. I'm using the CH Eclipse Shake by the way. I was a little bit disappointed that it didn't detect the CH Eclipse Shake straight away, so I had to mess around with bindings and stuff. But hey, I'm used to doing that in DCS, <laughs> you know, and it can take. A bit of time to do that, so that's fine. We've got our uh, fuel valve all ready to go. Make sure we've got our parking brake set. Actually, we can prop. We can put the fuel pump on for a couple of seconds. Listen to that. Everything. I don't know if you can hear. Hopefully, you can hear the sounds okay. Hopefully, the levels are all right. Throttle cracked, and I think we're ready for an engine start. So let's just go for this and see what it's. What happens? My first, my first engine start in the Microsoft Flight Sim. That sounds beautiful. Oh, those those sounds! It's quite strange not to be in VR, guys, as well. It's very odd indeed. Uh, hey, Julian, is ATC good enough to handle you and AI tr aircraft? Well, I can only go by what I've seen in other people's videos because unfortunately, as I say, I've only just installed this. So I really can't. Some of the questions you may want to know, I might be a bit useless, guys. Sorry. Um, but I will certainly be looking at all that as we go along. But the ATC system, by, you know, is just incredible compared to, uh, I'll just show you here, look. In fact, actually, let's see if we can get, because we could do with the, getting the ATIS information once we get our avionics on. So. So any questions you've got guys, fire away, and if, if I can do them and have a look during the flight, I certainly will. But as I say, this is the Microsoft Flight Sim Deluxe version, so I've got a lot of aircraft to go through. Uh, just so many locations and I'm going to do a world tour. It's just going to be an incredible time in this sim. Just so exciting. Right, okay, so... Let's just see how to do this, because I say I've no idea how, how you even do this. Uh, right, I was expecting a window for ATIS, but it's not there, so already. <laughs> oh, not unless I've got the assist thing on, although I don't think I have. I may have to leave the ATC for another video, because I don't think it's giving me the right options. I'm such a noob, guys, I've no idea what I'm doing. No idea at all. We're using real weather, by the way, and as I sort of, um, as I sort of spawned in, for lack of a better word, uh, to the airport, there was a rain shower that was going overhead, which was just amazing. Anyway, we're going to do a just a very simple direct to. In fact, we've actually got a flight plan in already. I did do a little flight plan, so actually no, we'll we'll do we'll go to the. Lun VOR and then we'll head direct to East Midlands from there so we've already got, actually got that set in there so that's brilliant I like how it does that just a thing of beauty guys this thing incredible right anyway let's go and find an active runway or any runway it's <laughs> as I say I'm not going to be doing things by the book today guys so that will be videos in the future this is just a quick first look impressions really my very first flight in the new Microsoft flight sim and it's really weird because I want to look around for other aircraft and things and I can't I do like how the, the 
the menu system and the camera system is really in depth actually and I need to really mess around with that. I know there's a drone camera and all sorts but I like how some of the uh, sort of view systems from X-Plane is, uh, is available so you can move around with the nu uh, numeric pad here which I like that will be very cool and of course if you hold down your right mouse button you can look around like that just like an X-Plane which is brilliant right flaps are coming down in fact to be honest I don't think I've even set my I'm trying to use my trim wheel for my side tech trim wheel but it's not working so I'm having to use you can see here I'm using a button on my CH yoke instead lots of things to work out here alright sip of coffee we'll go to the external camera view a moment whoops that's the wrong one and we'll get cracking just oh my god look at that straight away you can see here that there's a night very nice but clear blue sky right ahead overhead but you can see there's some frontal systems coming in there now yesterday in the UK there was some ferocious thunderstorms in fact we've had quite a bit of thunderstorm weather this last couple of days and annoyingly I think today is actually going to be a nice day but I suppose really that's probably a good thing considering I'm a new pilot in this new sim open doors for sound okay wait I don't even know how to open the doors Monty honestly this is how much of a noob I am at this at the moment I presume you could just do this and look down and click on the doors but I can't seem to do that for whatever reason I did try that before so I don't know how you do that not unless you, is it shift E that's it used to be like that in the old FSX days no I don't think so Listen to how it's rattling as it's idling. Absolutely beautiful. Right, okay, we might set a... Uh, I'm probably not going to use the autopilot too much, but we will set an altitude. 3,000 feet. We're in CDI's in GPS mode. Right, let's get cracking, guys, and get this flight underway. Where am I going? No, that's not the runway. This is actually the big slope there as well. Very cool. Now, presuming there's nothing on final, I'm not using live traffic. I am using live weather, as I say, but uh, I'm using AI traffic. It's amazing to think I'm actually live streaming and streaming the data as well. And my internet connection, guys, isn't that great. It's about. 30 megs a second is it per second somewhere around there it's not that great to be honest but so far so good right let's do a rolling start and get airborne and what we'll do is we'll do a lap of Heathrow whoa my trim's a bit too high there already off the centre line but I'm sure we'll be fine hopefully you guys you can hear me okay let me know if the sounds are a bit dodgy whoa I think my controls are a little bit too sensitive, but we'll we'll go with it for now. Check out those views, guys! Oh my god! I'm going to try my best not to swear because I'm not into that when, especially on YouTube. I'll do my best, but <laughs> this is going to be difficult. I'm drifting like crazy here. It's quite windy, actually have a quick look outside again oh my god that is absolutely staggering detail this is a handcrafted airport hopefully you can hear me okay and that looks sublime And the amazing thing is, we're getting smooth performance, guys. Absolutely butter smooth. I'm not sure how it's how it's going to appear on OBS, but really, really amazing. Getting a little um, sort of sound kind of spike there, where the sound cuts out. Oh, do you see the the light bloom there on that huge A380? It's 
this is default default airport and scenery there's the uh, ATC which he might actually be uh, my sort of co-pilot might be assisting the ATC there so but look at that oh my god that is incredible it really does blow the pants off anything we've ever seen from any sim Okay, so yeah, it looks like we're uh, ATC is trying to contact us. So at least uh, you can see it in action, even if I'm not doing it right. But I don't want to do a touch and go or anything like that. There's no cancel landing intention like that. So we'll just leave that. Oh god, the ortho quality is staggering. It's in amazing. I really did not expect to be able to run this at the such high settings out of the box straight away what a time for flight simulation now again apologies guys I'm gonna be a little bit clunky with my camera angles uh, and everything really because I've no idea what I'm doing quite simply I've never used this sim before I've never been on the Alpha team this is my very first flight But over the coming weeks and months, as we get to know this sim, I'm going to be bringing you so much content. If you're interested, guys, or if you'd rather me do some VR in X-Plane, that's fine too. Because I won't be uninstalling X-Plane. I think that would be foolish, especially as this doesn't have VR yet. But already, I just know this has changed the game forever. For me, personally. Right, anyway. Oh, God. See what I mean? I'm very clunky. I do apologise. Right, let's try this autopilot then. Let's zoom in a little bit here. Nav. <laughs> See, I'm already in trouble with the FAA. Oh, big turbulence spike there. Amazing. Right, right by why I've flown it yesterday. I'm a bit disappointed. Graphics are great, especially atmosphere and lighting. Artifacts in the clouds, not so much. Germany looks awful, and many airports are not even there. Likes, oh really? Camera is clunky as hell. Needs some work. Not X plane killer. Okay, that's interesting. You say that. Thanks for your thoughts on that. I think um, the camera system is weird. I think a lot of that is because it's completely different from anything we've ever seen before. Like I just personally like a simple spot view. I, don't, I haven't worked that out yet where I can just basically click a button I'm on I'm in spot view and I can pan around I can't do that I keep having to go to this menu here and go to the camera and then do it that way and then oh look at that wow and then it's not the aircraft is not central to the display it's kind of like quite cinematic which is all very nice but I, I want it to make remain the focus then I can pan around, so I don't know how to do that quite yet. Stunning. Ah, first stutter there, we had a stutter there guys. First one I've had. <laughs> we are in London, so I'm expecting some stutters and I've I really had, you know, I've done nothing with my graphic settings. I've just messed around with them. When I loaded the sim up, it recommended that I had medium settings. So that gives you an idea that my computer is not nowhere near high end these days. But I'm running a 1080 Ti card with um, an i5 8600K processor, and it's doing a fine job. I've got to say, I think I could actually get away with fine tuning these settings and getting. A, even better performance but for now I'm just gonna leave things as they are gotta say the visibility is a bit unrealistic you never get that kind of visibility in the UK 
I mean, that looks like it's about 100 miles or so. That's that's not right. So uh, I don't know whether they need to sort that out. But this is live weather, guys. Just check, actually. Making sure that it is live still. Yeah, live weather. So temperature moment's 15 degrees. Um, and no clouds in the area. Can't see the visibility there. Doesn't tell me there unless I'm missing it. The colours. I feel like I'm flying over Orbex True Earth. But this is totally out of the box scenery. Streaming as well. So I'm going to be using a, using a bit of more internet than normal. Obviously by streaming I'm going to... That takes quite a bit of frame rate off when you're recording anyway. But I just love how the aircraft sort of bobs around in the air and it's not sort of a repetitive kind of uh, effect that you can kind of after a while realise that it's doing the same thing. It's, it's, it is going through the air and it feels very natural. But you see that, can you hear that guys? I'm getting a bit of a, a bit of sound, a few sound issues there. It keeps cracking a little bit every now and then, don't know what's going on there. You won't get a more raw video of this, <laughs> this sim than today. This is what all you guys are going to be doing. Literally just firing it up. What's it doing now? Okay, that's a bit of an exaggerated turn there. Couple of little stutters. Look at that. Oh, that, those shadows and lighting effects. Very nice. That's a very exaggerated turn. I know what, it, what it's doing right now. Getting us back on course, hopefully. Okay, it's going a bit me mental. <laughs> Loving the scenery though, absolutely gorgeous. I might, I'm tempted just to do a simple director at this point, although is it, is it finding itself again on the flight plan? I think it is, yeah. Stunning. Zoom out a little bit here. So this is the English countryside. All its glory. Looking absolutely beautiful. Oh, wow. Well, I've got to say, the autopilot is not doing what it's supposed to be doing at all. Yeah, that needs some work. I'll tell you what we'll do before this ends badly. We're just going to go, uh, maybe do a direct two if we can. My goodness, what on earth is it doing? Holy, in fact, I'll tell you what, take the autopilot off completely. That's mental. That's not realistic at all. That needs sorting out. So what we'll do, we'll go in heading mode instead. How do you do this? Using the scroll wheel here. There we go. Right, autopilot. This is. This feels weird with that VR, guys. I've got to say. Heading mode, altitude hold. Hopefully that will. Uh, do that and then we'll we'll punch in our destination echo golf sorry guys might take a while here echo golf november x-ray there we go so that should be punched in there now. Oh no, it hasn't worked. So what we could do it this way instead. Direct to East Midlands. Activate. Well, what am I doing wrong here? Not letting me activate it for some reason. I'll hold it down. 
I have no idea what I'm doing. No idea at all. <laughs> it's all good fun. We'll just do it manually with the heading control for now. Check the chat quickly. Joshua, shame no VR till later. Absolutely, it's uh Yeah, it's a real shame. I've no idea what they what they were thinking, like release a flight sim in twenty twenty without VR. Like massive mistake, guys. But you know <laughs> look at it. Just look at this sim. It is so incredible. I'm so blown away with it already and I've only been flying for about oh about an hour two hours I could not sleep last night I basically set it going about 12 o'clock I've had about five hours sleep which is actually pretty good considering <laughs> and uh, load it up straight away I haven't had one crash so far but I've got to say the autopilot is not doing its thing it's misbehaving but hey I'm expecting a few little bugs here and there. But yeah, it should have VR. Have you tried out the poor man's VR big screen head tracking? Yes, uh, Belgio did a fantastic video of how to actually, you know, have a bit of a VR experience using track IR. Oh my god, what is going on? Right, okay. Okay, the autopilot needs some work. Special, unless I'm doing something spectacularly wrong, which is entirely possible, but kind of doubt it to be honest. Oh, it's bumpy. I think we're gonna have to hand fly this, guys, to be honest. But yeah, for me personally, I think it's an ingenious solution and very typical of Balgio. He's he's one of them guys that uh, is very good at problem solving and working out how to run VR. And I think it's amazing what he's done. And definitely give it a try if you've got Track IR. I don't have Track IR. I've never... The only thing I did buy once was the track hat thing, and I haven't got that anymore. And, you know, it's quite expensive track IR, really. You're talking of a couple hundred quid. I'd rather just wait for the fully-fledged VR experience. I'm quite happy to actually use this without VR for a couple of months until they're ready to uh, for it to be implemented. It will give me a chance to get to know the sim, uh, do a few flights, do a few tours, and then I think when VR is released, it'll be the we'll be excited all over again won't we so I'm happy to wait personally but if you have got track IR I would definitely highly recommend trying out uh, Balgeode's uh, sort of solution to it it looks a bit cumbersome but I think it's actually quite an ingenious solution a very clever solution that might actually work oh it's very bumpy here and I can't even use my autopilot system <laughs> hope they support the G1 owners like me well to be honest Joshua um, sorry I'm going through these comments of, you know, very slowly um, I haven't pre-ordered the G2 I'm hoping H uh, HP are going to provide me with a review copy but uh, I haven't actually pre-ordered the G2 yet only because I have the G1 and I'm very happy with it I really do feel don't quote me on this that the G1 will be supported simply because it's a HP reverb you know unless there is some sort of weird lockout system uh, that only supports G2 headsets uh, which I highly doubt to be honest I think the any or most Windows Mixed Reality headsets will work particularly the reverb G1 so uh, yeah I'm hoping it'll work I think it will to be honest Milo hey how you doing it's good to see you I haven't uh, seen you for a while actually I've missed your streams so uh, I hope you're uh, gonna be coming back and making an, a comeback appearance soon because it's what you're, you're one of the guys that inspired me to start doing this anyway so uh, yeah everyone go please check out Milo's channel I'll uh, link it in the description below after this video his uh, flight sim channel is fantastic really really enjoyable content it's strange that any sim maker thinks they don't need VR. I know, absolutely. I also bought this. We'll try it out when they implement VR. So you've bought it, but you're not going to use it until VR is supported. Wow. I'm impressed with your uh, with your patience. 
and your resilience. I had to, I bought it straight away. <laughs> Milo, it's not that they didn't want it in. Microsoft wanted it out. I doubt Sabo did. Yeah, I, I think Microsoft. Oh God, sorry. I look away. I'm looking at the chat, guys. Sorry. Look at that scenery. Oh my God, that's beautiful. Um, yeah, I think um, Microsoft is not a fan of VR. Well. They did get burnt a while back when VR first became a thing. Uh, so I don't think they're as hot on it as some developers. But I think if it, if it was a Sobo's choice, they probably would have implemented it sooner. But I do feel there's been some internal discussions and heated debates going on around the table at Microsoft H HQ uh, about VR. And thankfully, they are taking it seriously now. It, they are working on it. Just a case of when, not if. Oh, that's my trim wheel. I really wish this autopilot would work so I could check the chat out properly because this is a bit of a handful at the moment, this Cessna. I'll try doing it again, but no promises. What the? Oh my god. <laughs> I really don't know what's going on with this autopilot, guys. I just hope you got your seatbelts fastened. Apologies. Look at the light bloom. Look at the ortho. Oh, we've got it. We had a stutter there for a second. I'm letting you know, letting you know, guys. If I get any stutters, even the slightest stutter, I'll let you know. This is my first ever flight in an X-plane <laughs> in Flight Sim 2020. I want to look at the chat, but for some reason, the autopilot is not playing ball here. Let me just get this, see if I can get it at least behaving itself. So look guys, what am I doing? Am I doing anything wrong here? I've got, if I press the autopilot and then click heading mode, altitude hold. It's banking over like crazy. Yeah, that definitely needs some work. Not unless I'm doing something wrong. That, that may be it, I don't know, but I've got the CDI selected there. Okay, it's behaving itself again. So, because it's behaving itself, I'll go to back to the chat again. It's awesome without VR, I totally agree, Milo. Have you been on the Alpha team at all? Oh, yes, you have. I've just uh, <laughs> answered my own question there. I've been in alpha with track art on 34 inch screen. Yeah, I'm actually using guys, um, if you want to know, I'm using a 42 inch plasma TV screen. So my resolution is very low. So I've had to up the scaling in the, uh, in the settings, which works perfectly fine. I'm, I'm loath, I'm loath to buy a huge curved monitor. I nearly did, you know, but what's the point? I'm a VR guy. I really, you know, VR is the future, in my opinion, and uh, I'm not going to be using this on the monitor for too long, I hope. So I've decided to just keep using my 42 inch, like, massive, like, it's an old plasma TV, and it looks fantastic on the screen, personally. So I'm just going to keep with that for now. All right, quick coffee uh, stop here. Milo, these aircraft didn't get tested much as it wasn't in the Alpha. Okay, well, that kind of explains the very weird autopilot behaviour, but it seemed to be... It's kind of behaving itself again now. So hopefully, that will be it. Scenery is just amazing. Absolutely incredible. To have this level of scenery detail, you know... The amount of hours and days I've spent downloading my own ortho scenery. You know, the computer being on for weeks downloading it and then it wouldn't even be that great. This is all colour corrected. And with the Azura kind of technology, or whatever it's called. <laughs> is it that Black Shark AI or whatever it's called? It's just, it, it all creates an incredible scene right here out of the box absolutely beautiful I 
I've got to say, already, I'm going to really struggle to get go back to X-Plane. Because this, this is a, a huge leap in what we've ever seen before in the world of flight simming. Um, I just feel that this is the biggest, huge uh, shift we've seen in terms of technology and... It's not just the eye candy guys, this is not just a pretty sim, it's got all the other stuff in there as well, the flight dynamics, the weather system, just the data that's being thrown at this, you know, full AI traffic, I just, and it's not even a subscription model, which I find incredible, to be honest, really, really impressive stuff. Amazing video, thank you Living Aviation, I really appreciate that, I mean, to be honest, this is just a warts and all video. It's my very first check of this uh, sim. I've no, got no idea what I'm doing. You know, I'll hold my hands up. I've no idea what I'm doing. I'm just sharing this with you guys, my very first flight. Andrew, check out Squirrel's channel. He recommends getting an Xbox game controller for specific controls of the drone camera. See tutorial number three. Thank you, Andrew. Yeah, I've, I've been checking out Squirrel's channel quite a lot over this last week. Fantastic content, guys. Really recommend checking his channel out. He's got a very beefy computer, that, and it looks absolutely fantastic. So, yeah, totally. Uh, what else have we got here? Right by wire. Yeah, the feeling is great. It's very dynamic. Absolutely. Microsoft with their Windows Mixed Reality don't want VR. It's, I don't know what's happened, honestly. I, I just think it's been a bit of a miscommunication. Probably someone at the top, the Xbox game division guy, I can't remember his name, is very anti-VR. I've got a feeling there's been a bit of a conflict, but w you know, but with the likes of Balgeode and the VR Aviation channel, sorry, Facebook group, and obviously the guys who went down there and checked this sim out in Seattle all those months, in fact a year ago or more, it's doing again guys, look at this, the autopilot's going a bit crazy. Why is it doing that? You know, but I think we've we've our voice has certainly been heard, and VR is on its way. And for the time being, I'm quite happy to to use it like this, just to check it out. And yeah, that's a that's a big bug there. The the autopilot system on this 172 does not work very well. So that's that's uh, my first bug that I've noticed of many, I'm sure. <laughs> Milo, go fly in the back country in the Cub. Yeah, I've got so many flights planned, I cannot wait. I just don't have enough hours in a day. I've got two weeks left of my break before I go back to work. And, uh, oh my God, what is going on? I look at the chat for one second and that happens. That's really annoying. That's not cool, don't like that at all. That's really bad. Every time I look at the chat, guys, the autopilot wants to kill me. Oh, how annoying. Maybe I'll try and use the chat on my phone. Maybe that might be a better idea, instead of looking away from the screen every five minutes, because that's really annoying. don't like that at all. Right. Is there a way of checking the chat out on my, on my phone? I can tell I'm all new to this. I'm such a noob. Uh, channel probably check out oh god my own live stream here there we go that's a better way of doing it now I can actually look at the live chat on my phone oh now I can hear myself that's not good sorry guys this is just ridiculous there we go let's gain some sort of control again Oh, such fun and games. What headset do you have on? Um, I have the... Oh, God, it's really old. It's a Turtle Beach something or other headset that I'm using. And hopefully that microphone isn't too bad. It might be distorting a bit. I apologise if it is. I'm getting a couple of stutters here at the moment. Which is fine. I can't. I'm not expecting this sim, sim to run completely smooth all the time, especially with what I'm doing right now. In fact, yeah, literally, I had about about three or four seconds of stutters, and now it's fine again. Look at those clouds! Oh my god! <clears throat> K 
KRO, how clear are the numbers in front of you? Um, well, as I say, I'm using quite a low resolution monitor. So to be honest, and this is quite ironic really, if I was in VR right now, in the reverb, I'd, get, I'd be actually getting a better image. I'd be able to see the cockpit better, because that's a 2K per eye display. But I'm using a very low resolution monitor. So, but having said that, I can see everything fine. Apart from this text here, I can't see that. Until, unless I zoom in. <coughs> Excuse me. <laughs> yes. No, yeah, I know. My name is VR Flight Sim Guy and I'm not in VR. So, yeah. Breaking news. I'm not in VR. <laughs> in fact, 95% of my content in v is in VR, but obviously the new Microsoft Flight Sim is not VR ready yet. So, that is something that we're going to have to wait for a while. So, yeah, you might not see so much VR content on the channel in the next few months. Having said that, Please let me know guys if you'd rather me continue flying in VR in X-Plane and in DCS and all of the other sims I will more than happily still create videos but if you'd rather just see me uh, fooling around in a new Microsoft flight sim and getting it very wrong it seems at the moment with the way I'm flying but I'm trying to get things somewhat steady again uh, then you know please feel free to tag along but I will be definitely flying in a new Microsoft flight sim a lot over the next well who knows who knows <laughs> living aviation oof yeah sorry about that anyone sat in the back I do apologize please keep your trades in the upright position please keep your drinks in the cup holders provided it's gonna get messy oh look at that for a view guys oh my word that is absolutely blowing the pants off any other flight sim that has ever been before. Just look at that. That is staggering. Absolutely beautiful views. Oh, wow. That is gorgeous. I really don't like the uh, all of those, like the flap and altitude and airspeed indicator thing. It makes it look a bit arcadey. I think that's uh, a, a few vi people have mentioned the same thing. It kind of it doesn't do the sim any favours. It's useful having that information. Don't get me wrong, but I'd like to find a view where that's all out of the way. And I'm sure I'll work it all out eventually. Nice golf course. Oh, hang on. Oh, check this out, guys. We're going over Silverstone right now. That is Silverstone. I recognise that anywhere. Nice. Very, very nice indeed. Wow. Of course, that was completely uh, part of the plan, guys. I meant to fly right over Silverstone. <laughs> yeah, right. Love that light bloom there as well. In fact, I think MotoGP should be at Silverstone in the uh, not so distant future, and they'll be they'll be doing two races there. So I'll be looking forward to watching that. See, like at the moment, I've got snap views, and I've got sort of the mouse sort of view, which is okay. But I want the aircraft central in the screen all the time, and I can't seem to do that. But you know, this is literally my first flight, so. Who knows? Options general camera, then turn off the H, the hood. Okay, thank you very much. I'll do that right now. We'll go to uh, options general camera, then turn off hood. Where is that? Uh, it's right in front of me, isn't it? I just can't see it. Ah, instrument heads up. Yeah, it's actually uh, right over my mouse there. Right, here we go. Hopefully that's sorted that out then. Here we go. Oh, that's better. Thank you very much. Much appreciated. 
That is much better. Hey Dave, how you doing? Good to have you aboard. Milo, spacebar will pop your head up. I'll have a look at that. Oh, that's cool. I'm guessing that's the landing view, is it? That I've been hearing about. That's nice. That's a nice view, actually. I like that. In fact, to be honest, it's quite weird, because in the real 172, you wouldn't be there. You wouldn't be there. You'd kind of be in the middle. Uh about there somewhere about that that's kind of the view you'd have maybe it's a little bit lower I can't quite seem to get the right view there that's the thing with VR you know you don't have to think about views because you, you're inside the aircraft so you just look around you pop, pop your head up and down and look around and it's just wonderful and I imagine it's the same actually for track IR which I'm very tempted to get but for the sake of a couple of months or so I think I'm just gonna live with this live with this oh such hard work isn't it living with the sim looking like this <laughs> absolutely stunning okay anyway so let's have a look at where we are because we're actually heading to east midlands airport at the moment and we are <laughs> are we literally one hour 25 minutes away or the no sorry one minute 23 seconds away from dty I'm missing Avitab, guys. I like Avitab. It tells you where you are. It's kind of cheats, though, doesn't it, really? So this is the VR... VR. Oh, actually, we're not far away at all, actually. That's the VFR map, which is very cool. I like that. be nice if we can add some extra detail to that as time goes on. This is just wonderful, guys. I just love the way this thing is running. on my crappy internet connection as well I, I, I'm only you know my internet isn't very good but it's having no problems at all streaming this data which I'm very surprised about try 53 for default height will do uh, yeah I will do that I don't know how to change that right now but I will do that thank you I read central London is not modeled at present Bruce Okay, well, I haven't checked it out yet, but uh, that's one thing, guys, I really need to... Uh, I've reiterated this quite a few times and harped on about it a lot on the channel, is that even though we've got this fantastic flight sim now and it's beautiful, it's next generation, it's a massive shift in what we've ever seen before, no doubt about it, but if you are wanting to tour an area with really good landmarks, really good points of interest you need to use the Orbex truer scenery in, in X-Plane uh, you know I'm not expecting to see the Dartford Crossing for instance I'm not expecting to see the Lincoln Cathedral I'm not expecting to see certain uh, you know real obvious models now what I am expecting is Orbex to come out with a landmark pack I'm really hoping they're not going to go the route of producing just cities I want them to produce regions, landmark regions. That would be what we all want, you know. Uh, sort of overlays. Because we don't need the ortho anymore because we've got the most incredibly detailed ortho, colour match and everything already. I mean, just look at that down there. It looks amazing. So we don't need that anymore. But what we do need is those landmarks. And to be honest, that shouldn't be too difficult for Orbex to implement because they've already got the assets. They've already got them in both sims. All we need now is it for it to be implemented into this uh, new sim. And I'm just noting, noticing a bit of a weird effect there on the uh, clouds. That looks a bit, a bit dodgy, but that's okay. I think some people are being a bit too fussy with this, expecting it to be absolutely perfect out of the box. This is a next-gen sim. And I've got to say, if you remember the launches of any other sim platform, particularly, do you remember... I, rem I even remember this, the launch of Microsoft Flight Simulator 2000 and then FS2002 and FSX. It was an absolute disaster. It wouldn't work on launch. There was crashes. There was issues. Even with the latest games that I've ever bought, like Battlefield and that, there's been server crashes. There's been all sorts of problems. So far, this has been completely seamless. It's been absolutely fine. No problems for me at all. So the odd little graphical error here is not a deal breaker it really isn't guys 
let's give this sim time to mature. What's the frame rate like, Steve? Well, to be honest, Dave, unless there's a way of overlaying the frame rate, I'm going to have to try getting, like, I haven't got fraps installed, but I'm going to have to use that maybe to get my frame rate. But I actually don't know what frame rate I'm getting at the moment, uh, unless there's a way of doing it in the sim uh, itself. But I, I would imagine I'm getting at least... 90 frames per second. <laughs> I'm having a joking, guys. I'm probably getting about. I'm just looking at the terrain here. At, at least 35, 40 frames per second. At least. Probably more near a 50, 55, to be honest. But it's hard to tell. But it feels very smooth. Very, very smooth indeed. But yeah, getting back to the or Orbex thing. Like, I'm going to be landing at East Midlands in a minute. I'm used to the Orbex East Midlands Airport, as I'm sure any of you who've watched my channel, I use that airport quite a lot, and it looks amazing. It's going to look a bit crap in this particular sim, because it's going to be default generic airfields. So, but you know what? I don't care, because when you get weather like that, scenery like this, and performance the way I'm getting at the moment, I'm happy to forgo my Orbex sceneries for the time being. And it's not going to be very long, guys, before they're going to populate the world anyway. That's my take on it, really, guys. I mean, feel free to disagree with me. I'm absolutely fine. Windows and G key for Xbox overlay. Oh, Windows and G key. I, I don't do that in case it's going to do something bad, but let's just try it. Nope, that didn't work. Oh, hang on. Oh, it did work. I'm not sure you're going to see this, guys, actually. Oh, this is interesting. Can you see that on the screen? Let's just have a look. No, you can't. Okay, well, I can let you know what this t is telling me here. Oh, this is interesting, guys. My CPU is currently 80%. 80%? Uh, my GPU is 38%. I thought it would be the opposite way around, guys. I'm using 61% of my RAM, which is interesting because I've... I've got 16 gigs of RAM guys, I've got, I haven't got 32 gigs of RAM like everybody else so I thought this would be an interesting test as well it's not telling me my frame rate though unfortunately it's... it's oh it requests you need expanded user account control access request access oh sorry guys that might have just I don't want to do too in case it crashes a sim but hopefully that will work and I'll be able to let you know my frame rate no, it's not working. Oh, that's a shame. Never mind. I can tell you guys, though, it's ext extremely smooth. And look at these clouds. Oh, absolutely staggering. Oh, it takes my breath away, guys. It really does. Find enable developer mode and you will get a bar at the top. Okay, I might try that later on, guys. But at the moment, my frame rate is really smooth. It feels really smooth. Even if I'm getting 12 frames per second, it feels brilliant to me. <laughs> it really does. But it, it honestly feels, judging by you know what I'm used to in X-Plane, I'm, I'm definitely getting at least, definitely over 35, 40 frames per second, at least. And my specs, someone asked about my specs. Timber. I'm using an i5-8600K processor which is a 6 core processor I'm using stock speeds 3.6 gigahertz which is really low actually I need to uh, overclock my CPU which I'm probably going to do actually soon and I'm using a 1080 Ti Zotac Mini that's important a mini graphics card so it's basically a fact it's absolutely amazing card but you can't really overclock it because it's a mini card but it's done me proud over the years I tell you that Right, I can try this, guys. Let me have a look here. Sorry if I'm shouting my head off. I do apologise. Uh, options, right. Options general. Developer. Then enable. Apply settings. What's that going to do? Oh, hello. Interesting. Now, now what do I do now? I'll wait and, and, and see what you tell me to do next. Because <laughs> I don't really know what I'm 
doing here? This is kind of cool. I like this. Kevin, hi Steve, just saw a note from Reaction Review, Review. can't say that for some reason, can't talk, I think it's my shock of this new sim, saying that the new Orbex London scenery for this sim is total pants, really? Interesting, I'll have to check that out, thank you very much. Dave, do you have the settings cranked up to full? Let, I'll tell you what, I'll let you know, I'll show you now. This is my graphic settings at the moment, bear in mind guys, I have literally just installed this and this is my very first flight. So, what I've got is everything on high. Uh, <clears throat> I don't know why my frame limit is 60. I doubt I'm even getting that, to be honest. But this is my... I'll just basically scroll down. I'm going to do, you know, really in-depth uh, videos on this over time. That's really low, the shadow quality there, isn't it? Maybe we can up that a bit, actually. Although I don't want to mess around too much, because it might mess the sim up. Applying graphic settings. That was quick. If that was X plane, you'd have to reload it and it would take half an hour. Uh, what else have we got here? Lens flare. I don't really like lens flare actually. Uh, lens correction. Choose whether to enable that. Maybe leave that off for now. Yeah, so as you see here, my graphic settings are not ultra. I'm not. I might try that at some point, but really, you know, just look at the sim, guys. Look at it. Look at how beautiful this sim looks. Oh my word, that is absolutely incredible. And I think it's all the more special because I haven't been flying in the Alpha. This is my very first time flying. And it's by the back of your hand gorgeous, isn't it? I mean, look at the ortho. And that's another thing, guys. The ortho quality is a lot sharper than you'd get from an Orbex True Earth package. I think that's worth mentioning as well. Okay, now the top at the bar options. Yep. Then where? Frame rate? Dis oh, display frame rate. Here we go, guys. And there you have it. I was right. We're getting... That's actually really good, isn't it? 50 frames per second. 55 frames per second. So, I, s I thought we were getting about 45 frames or so but that's actually higher than I thought and look at the cores there all being used that's brilliant finally guys we're able to utilize all of our systems innards <laughs> you know all of the all of the you know fantastic hardware that we bought probably many years ago we're finally using CPU memory I don't know what that is CPU memory budget no idea what that is either GPU so there you are guys, that is the frame rate I'm getting right now. That's pretty amazing. That means I would be able to use this in VR no problems at all. Even if I left my settings exactly how they are now, I'd be getting about 30 frames per second in VR, which is enough. Especially in the Rift S, that's absolutely perfect. In the reverb it's a little low, but you'd be able to get away with it if you use motion projection. Got it at 3am this morning and I am very impressed. Yeah, me too, Paul. Option to display FPS, the bush flying. Finally, sorry, Calvin, it's taken me a while. I'm in a state of shock here, guys. Sorry. Do you want me to, would you like me to leave that frame rate on in the right-hand corner, even though I know it's annoying? It doesn't kind of... It's in the way of the view, but uh, it might be interesting for you guys to, to have that on there. And there is... Is that East Midlands? No, that's not East Midlands. Not yet. Oh my god, look at that cloud! Holy crap, that looks absolutely amazing. There's a little bit of uh, weirdness going on. Oh wow. I'm sorry guys, I know you're used to me being, you know, exclaiming <laughs> with lots of wows and superlatives, but you're going to get it even more now because this is, I've never experienced this before, ever. This is a complete new level of flight sim experience. I mean, when we get VR, guys, this is going to be... Oh, well, I've, I've, I've run out of words, guys. I'm just absolutely dumbfounded with what I'm seeing right here. I'm going straight for this cloud here. 
This might be a bad idea, but never mind. Yeah, I'm flying into a cloud right now. Yes, I'm using... I've got it on an SSD. I'm, I haven't got it on an M2 dot whatever it is. I've just got it on a standard sort of SSD. It cost me about 150 quid for a 250... Sorry, sorry, not 250. What am I talking about? Um, a 2 terabyte SSD. Uh, it's a Western Digital SSD and it's running great. So that's me flying through a cloud. Checking I've got no icing here. I haven't got my pito heat on. I need to put that on now. This is so gorgeous. This is absolutely amazing. Oh, God. In fact, you know what? I'm getting 60 frames per second. I'm, I'm locked at 60 frames per second. So because of that, I'm going to crank the settings up a little bit more because I'm going to crank the, the, um, the clouds up to ultra. They're already on high. Let's try them on ultra. I may regret this. <laughs> there we go, guys. Clouds are now on Ultra. Couple of stutters there. And we're back at 60 frames per second. Right, now at this stage, at 60 frames per second, if I can get to that stage, that means I will be able to get 45 frames per second in the reverb, which means you'll get really smooth performance. So that is, and this is the first, literally, the very first time I'm messing around with this sim there's going to be plenty of optimizations in the future this is boding very well guys I'm really impressed with this and I promise you guys I'm not affiliated with Microsoft or anything like that I have bought it with my own hard-earned money in fact I bought the deluxe whatever you call it version 110 pounds and yeah totally worth it totally worth it <laughs> VR flight sim orgasm guy yes I do apologize guys sorry I'm very excitable today I've only had half a coffee but when you see such incredible visuals as this this is the kind of flight sim that I have been dreaming about for years absolutely years just look at the weather Oh my god, it looks incredible. Guys, I bought this game on CD keys but I don't know how to download it. So I'm not, I can't really help you on that one at the moment because I, I bought this off the Microsoft Store. Um, that was my choice. I mean, you can buy it off Steam as well, but I decided for the, uh, to go straight from the horse's mouth, so to speak. I always prefer to do that. Look at those clouds. I'm going to be saying that a lot, guys. I apologise trying to calm myself down here but I can't help it the scenery is just oh my god look at that oh wow I think I need a room with this sim <laughs> on my own for for a while I am totally blown away with this it's this reminds me of the very first time <coughs> that I loaded up I don't know what would it be probably FS 2002 or something probably because I've been flight simming since FS 5 but I remember that oh wow moment when we first started seeing proper graphics and it was probably FS 2002 when we first started seeing autogen how amazed I was with that this is completely on another level. Anyway guys, let's make it to East Midlands Airport so we can get landing here. We're using real live weather. We're about seven minutes away. And I'm in a cloud. <laughs> a fully volumetric 3D cloud. nice little hole there in the middle of the cloud look at that oh that's beautiful orgasmic is definitely the word and then you descend out of the cloud into that 
this is just incredible. Absolutely amazing. Alright, anyway. Best look at the chat. Sorry, guys. Those could be considered modest specs, to be honest, and it runs pretty well. Yeah, totally. No, this is... My computer is modest at best nowadays. I've had this computer for three years, and I haven't done a thing to it. Actually, that's a lie. I did get a 1080 Ti card. I did have a 1070, and I've changed my card, and I do feel the 1080 Ti card is really strutting its stuff right now. I do feel that is what's making the difference here. But remember, I'm using 16 gigs of RAM, not 32, 16 gigs. Do you know, because we're so high, I might try a stall in a minute and a bit of a spin. With the developer mode, you can change the plane on the fly too. No, no pun intended, I'm sure there, Calvin. <laughs> Turn on the blink, turn on the strobes. I did have my strobes on actually, uh, but I'm not sure if that cloud was thick enough really to uh, simulate that. Yeah, and no flicker, absolutely. The clouds look fantastic. I'm sorry, guys, I'm missing all of your chats here. Windows eats RAM like a kid eats. <laughs> yeah, well, you say that, but I'm literally 16 gigs of RAM. I'm live streaming, and I'm getting between 50 and 60 frames per second with ultra. Where clouds as well. Very, very cool. Soaring must be a must. Vinsu, yeah, totally agree. That would be amazing. Can I install on my spare SSD? Uh, yeah, you can choose wherever you want to install it. No problems. Paul, once you guys get get it, you will understand how it feels. Yeah, totally agree. In fact, actually, I want to say something, guys, here as well. I want to say that the first thing that struck me, and this I wasn't expecting this, was the actual flight model of the 172. I'm no PPL. I've, I don't have a PPL, guys, but I do have done quite a lot of general aviation flying, and I've flown in a 172 and actually landed one with the help of my <laughs> good pilot friend at uh, Guernsey once. And yeah, it feels. I mean, I need to adjust my sensitivities of my controller, but it does feel absolutely spot on. It really does. Right, anyway, let's go for a landing. Let me know if you want to keep that very ugly looking frame rate counter, but it is very interesting, isn't it, to see. So I'll, I'll keep it on there unless you'd rather me get it out of the way, but it, uh, it's not too bad, is it? It's kind of in that corner. I also think, guys, I'm probably getting away with really good frame rate because I'm not running a 4K monitor. I'm running a 42 inch plasma TV guys, that's right, a 42 inch plasma TV and it looks great, it looks fantastic and I, I'm not really bothered about, oops, let me to do that, I'm not bothered about changing my monitor, bit of a stutter there, simply because I'm, I'm waiting for VR guys, I'm going to be flying this in the new G2 and the Reverb G1 and the Rift S, so getting a new monitor would be completely pointless to be honest and actually because this is such a huge monitor, it looks spectacular. It really does. Right, let's get the ATIS from East Midlands here. If we can. Can't get it just yet. How do you go back? Oh, hang on. No, hang on. I'm not doing this right. Here we go. Oh, okay, so it's a... You can't get the ATIS from <laughs> East Midlands because it's classed as a... Not as a... Um, an unmanned airport, so that needs... Oh, no, it's all right. It's me being stupid. Here we go. You hear the wind. Oh wow. Okay. Two nine nine or six. That's about that. Getting a couple of stutters here. 
But nothing to write home about, guys, honestly. I get worse stutters than X Plane in Vulcan. Can you hear that? That that's I think that's sort of the uh the ATC sort of Sort of interruption. Static, that's what I'm trying to say. Wowzers. Runaway 27. Well, I'll tell you what. This is quite a novel thing because I'm. Oh, we've got low fuel. We need to definitely get um, on the ground then. What another thing, guys, as well for me is that it's great to be able to have ATC again because I've missed that so much. VFR ATC. So you know you can still use the air traffic control system even if you haven't planned a, a flight plan. And that's what we'll do now. We'll crest a full stop landing. I'll tell you what, I'm going to get rid of the, fra the frame rate counter if I can remember how to do it now. Just for now. That's weird, I didn't hear him say that, but we are clear to land. Fair enough. It's like Christmas in my childhood downloading at 5.30am. Totally. I, I did stay up till 12 o'clock. The trim is a bit touchy on all aircraft. Yeah, I do need... I haven't changed anything, guys, in terms of my settings. This is my very first flight. I haven't set up anything. This is warts and all, my very first experience with the flight sim. Can you change pressure measurement? Yes, you can, uh, Delta. You can do that. I've seen that in a video with Squirrel, I believe. Yeah, ATC is a good return. Uh... Hey JTG DDR4 memory, I believe. I've got DDR4, 16 gigs of memory. That's it. That's nothing in this day and age, guys. Nothing. And yet it's running like this. I never expected. And I think the crucial thing to say, guys, and I said this at the start of the video, I'll say it again, is my internet connection isn't that great. Um, I think I'm running at about 30 uh, Mbps at, v at the best. Oh, that's interesting, because there is some cooling towers here. And they've sort of... Well, they haven't modelled it, actually. That's just a uh, a skyscraper building, but it almost looks like that. So, yeah, we are going to miss those points of interest. Right. Landing gear... Sorry, landing gear. <laughs> landing light is on. We'll stay in the cockpit. We're way too high here. I did say I was going to do a spin, but... I've forgotten, sorry guys. Get down to about... Uh In fact, you know, I am above the flat extension speed, but I'm going to just dump them out anyway. See what happens. And we're going to have to do a bit of uh, side slipping as well. So that will be interesting to see how the flight model handles that. Because we're way too high here. Look at the ortho there, beautiful. Look at that cloud layer. Oh my god. Clouds are ultra. Everything else is high. We're getting between 40, well, sorry, 50 and 60 frames per second. I'm side slipping. And it's working. I am, the speed is decreasing nicely there. That's fantastic. For a default aircraft, for the side slip to work as well as this is very impressive indeed. See, we've got a bit of a crosswind here. Okay, level out a bit here. Yeah, very twitchy controls. I do need to adjust my sensitivity. There we go. I'll take that. Just look at those clouds. Well, guys, that completes my very first flight in Microsoft Flight Simulator. Let me know what you think in the comments, guys, and in the chat, but I think it's pretty clear <laughs> what I think about it. That is for sure. Whoa! Totally blown away. Absolutely blown away. Apologies for my rubbish taxiing skills, as I say. 
So this is East Midlands Airport. It's, you know, it looks crap compared to the Orbex style. Of course it does. But uh, one, two, one, I can live with that for a few weeks, months, whatever it, you know, whatever it is. I do think it's great how they're giving us a discount for anyone who's uh, used... Uh, sorry, it's got uh, X-Plane scenery. I think that's fantastic. I think up to about 40 or 50% even. Now, is there a marshal anywhere? I'm just going to plonk this anywhere, to be honest. There's a guy there. Whether he can... Because I've never done this before. No, he's just a guy walking around. Just to even to see them, the animations. It's amazing. And this is the great thing. Because I haven't been an alpha tester, I'm experiencing this for the very first time. And it's been worth the wait. I'm just going to plonk this here. Listen to all those squeaks and rattles. Love it. There we go. Lovely. I'd like to see a bit of shaking there as the... Uh, as the engine uh, turns off there. Right, switch up all these off. Oh, I think I need to lie down, guys, now, after that. Amazing. Just quickly check the, check the chat. Here we go. The H experience. Install complete. See ya. Yeah. Don't, honestly, you uh, enjoy, mate. Absolutely enjoy. You're probably already gone. <laughs> is there any way to monitor the data usage? Yes, there is, actually. You can do that in... Uh, where is it? Data. Yeah, of course. <laughs> Duh. So, okay. This is interesting. I've been flying for about three hours now already. This has gone very quick. And I've used 2.7 gigs of data. And there you go. You can uh, you can ha you can limit your data, and you can uh, reset uh, the tracking of it as well. The data bandwidth usage as well. Bandwidth. I've got an unlimited uh, broadband, and I recommend you know you have an unlimited uh, internet provider to be honest. But yeah, I've used 2.17 already. That's quite a bit actually, and it's run very nice. Paul, I was up until 3 a.m. Yeah, I was up until half past 12. And then I couldn't really sleep, to be honest. I was sort of too excited. Too excited. I'd love to find out how much internet data this actually uses. Well, there you are. What CPU are you using? i5-8600K. Only support inches in Mercury. Oh, does it? Oh, I thought it did. Oh, maybe that's that can be something for the future. You have been flying the TBM too long? No, I haven't used the TBM at all, actually. In fact, I love to use it because of the Hot Start TBM is so good. The most amazing simulation of any general aviation aircraft you've ever seen. That I'm, I'm going to be disappointed with it, quite honestly. But you know, I will be using it. Uh, great, thanks, no problem. Do you like it? Yes, I absolutely love it. <laughs> Mind you, I'm not sure if the T 1080 Ti is compatible. Not quite sure what you mean there. Notice how the runway goes up. Yeah, it does. Sounds good to you. Okay, I think I'm about there. So, thanks guys. George, SIM installed on an external SSD. Maybe that's causing issues. Need to investigate. Yeah, I would recommend an internal SSD uh, if possible. That's interesting, uh, Sharks. You're getting the same frame rate as me with an RTX 2080 Super. I'm getting between 50 and 60 frames with a 1080 Ti card. So, that is very shocking, actually. I'm surprised about that. Well, guys, I'm going to leave it there because thank you so much for joining me on this live stream. I've been an hour and 20 minutes already. I probably should leave it there. I may, I may do a live stream later on. Let me know if you'd like to uh, see a bit more of this later today. And any suggestions or requests for future flights, please let me know in the comments. It's been fantastic sharing this very first flight with you. It's been very special. And I am totally blown away with this. It's everything I expected it to be and more. What else can I say? Take care, guys, and I'll see you all very soon. Bye-bye for now.